You've probably seen the blending mode options under Opacity and have wondered, what is that? Or maybe not. Maybe you know exactly what it is, but this episode was already titled, so we have no choice. This is what we're doing. Blending modes allow you to direct how you want to blend stacked layers together. Instead of simply affecting the opacity, blending modes will merge clips through different means. Like Darken will keep the darker pixels from the layer, Multiply will remove the bright parts of the image, making this a useful tool when incorporating assets that have a white background. And on the opposite side of that, we have Screen or Add, which will make the darkest areas of the image transparent. These are the ones you may find yourself using the most. Screen also works very well when it's being used to replace something like a TV or monitor screen, since it will remove the darkest parts of the image and reintroduce any of that natural glare from your bottom layer. There are many other blending modes, but instead of talking about what they each do, let's go through some examples of how you can use them. And these will all work inside of Premiere Pro, After Effects, and even Photoshop. So let's say you have a logo that you want to use as a watermark, but you don't want to just slap on the PNG and be done. Well, once you position your logo, go into Effects Controls, Opacity, and change your blending mode to something like Overlay. And you'll notice the transparency drops a bit. You can also try Soft Light, and that will soften the logo all around. If you want to get a bit experimental, you can use blending modes on different videos. So I have these two clips stacked on top of each other, and you'll notice we're getting different effects for each video. Or you can drop in different types of overlays that you can find free online to add film grain, tape distortion, film burns, light leaks, lens flares, pretty much any cool looking asset can be superimposed onto any image. This works perfectly when wanting your clips to feel connected or you're wanting a more interesting way to transition from one clip to another. Another popular effect editors often use is incorporating blending modes with text. So we have an establishing shot on track one, then some white text with a black background on track two. If you change the blending mode to multiply, the white areas of the image will be replaced with the clip on track one. Or you can remove the black background and keep the white text. Then set the blending mode to overlay, and now your title will be transparent in specific areas of the image, making it feel visually engaging. You can also create a double exposure image by increasing the contrast on your track one clip, then setting your track two clip's blending mode to multiply. But the way I find myself using blending modes the most is to blend different assets into my shot for various visual effects, like a muzzle flash. You can get a muzzle flash asset from a million different places, almost always on a black background, so we'll drop that onto our footage, put the asset in screen blending mode, position to match, and there you go. And of course, you could take it further by adding any other needed light or smoke effects. The same would apply to an explosion, laser, magical effects, and so on. You get the idea. There really is an endless amount of ways that you can utilize blending modes, and in many cases, I do find myself auditioning different blending modes on whatever layer I'm working on to see which has the effect I'm looking for. Obviously, if you have a bright asset on a black background, screen or add is usually what you're going to be using, but it's always good to explore because that's how happy accidents happen. But as always, if there's an effect or topic you would like to see us cover in a future episode, leave us a comment below. And subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and updates like this one, because giraffes are 30 times more likely to get hit by lightning than people. That's actually true.